So let's go up again. Let's go to this displacement node. And let's start doing some stuff. So let's do some vertical beams, for example. So that's a very interesting one. One thing we can use is the resample node, which is pretty cool because we have all these input segments. And we can kind of resample them and it will maintain basically the, the profile of the terrain, which is kind of cool. So we could set this to a certain length. And what we could then do is because we have this uh, attribute, and let's actually do this at the beginning because we might need this quite a bit. Let's set a length value to be equal to the length of our up vector. There we go. It should work. Perfect. And this is something you could, for example, use for a P scale. So right now we have this resample set. What I can do is set up, use a point wrangle to now set a a P scale attribute, or let's set just a scale attribute. And to set the scale attribute, I'm going to do V at scale equals set. Let's not change the horizontal one. The vertical one I do want to change to be at length. And then not, let's not change uh, the z-axis as well. And right now, if we do a copy two points, and we have a box we put in with a length of one, or a size of one, so just a normal box, which is going to be using those attributes. Oh, wrong way around. You can see that we're now kind of filling up the entire space. Let's make those sizes a little bit smaller. I'll do the, the sideways ones. And this is already adding some interesting bits. So right now there's one, uh, one little problem because right now it should be a little bit downwards or upwards, uh, if I'm correct, uh, all the way around. There we go. And now we have a perfect match. Well, sort of a perfect match, because one thing that we don't have is to fill those gaps. That's another interesting trick that we can go over. And to also make sure that we have those gaps uh, filled perfectly, what we can do, and what we should do is basically set this, uh, this value, this horizontal value also to be uh, basically the correct value. How can we do this? Well, let's place down a convert line. And this convert line, we want this rest length to be added to this segment. And then I'm going to do a prim wrangle. And inside of the middle of these segments, I will be adding some points. So I'm running over primitives and I'm adding a point. And I'm adding this point basically where the middle of this primitive is by just using its position. New PT is going to be equal so this is now the point number, and now I'm going to set a point attrib, which is going to be this rest length attribute, which I believe like this, it doesn't really matter, you could also uh, already name it scale, it's also fine. New PT, and that should be setting this value. And I'm missing something, what did I write wrong? Let's go back. Uh, what am I missing? Ah, I uh, didn't do the, uh, the the actual value actually, of course. Uh, let's go over here. And let's grab this rest length, which is on the primitive, so we can use this one to actually fetch it. And now let's also remove the current uh, primitive. prim num to get the current prim number and then this final option is to also delete points belonging to the primitive because we don't need those original points anymore and here we have uh, I'm doing something wrong again yeah prim ah, I wrote prim num wrong there we go and now we have a bunch of points 
we also need to actually have those orientation attributes again. Uh, so right now they are set to the points and to the primitive. So let's attribute promote those and move them to the primitive. You could make all small sorts of utility nodes for stuff like this. So you can have a very flexible system. So right now we have to set up a lot of stuff from scratch, but the moment you have a couple of utility nodes to help you with these uh, types of issues, it becomes really easy to make a lot of different types of building generators. And so now those values are set to the primitive and let's copy this over and do the same for up and n. There we go, that's the up version. And now we also need to set the normal. go and now if we have a look we have a bit more control and we have this rest length value and that's the one that we're going to use for this thing because now oh we also need the length let me not forget the length uh, attribute promote first to primitive because we're writing from a uh, from primitive over here and let's do copy over the normal length as well no there we go. And same for this. There we go. Let's have a look if it exists. Yeah, it exists. And F at length, I want to use that one. And then I believe I need to use, yes, Z1 length, uh, rest length. Let's see if I didn't make any typos. Otherwise they will become very thin. Yes, and it's something I did. Uh, and I needed the other direction, I guess. Uh, yes, all right. So um, let's have a look. So over here, I have length and I have rest length zero because this convert line, yeah, it didn't use. Uh, I can fix it over here, right? Rest length is now set, copy two points. And of course, I made a uh, bit of a mistake because the one that I want to change is not this one, but this one, which now needs to be set to one. And oh, looks like I still, let's just swap the direction. See if I, if that's the mistake I made. There we go. That's better. Perfect. So, now we have these objects also filling up the space completely, which is uh, now to go through the logic of why this worked is because we our original piece always has the length of one, which is kind of important for this to work. Um, we can do something to change that, but uh, we'll do that later. And the other thing that we have is uh, we have the original distance of this uh, segment because that's what we sampled it. And then with the convert line, we actually got the actual distance of all those separate points in those separate lines. And then we place the point in the middle of this with this exact length. And that's what we're using to scale it. But imagine that our my input piece, I don't want to scale it that much. So my input piece was actually two meters wide. Uh, you can see that this now gives a, uh, well, that's, you don't really see it because the, that's of course a round number. Uh, let's do 1.5. You can see that now they are going through each other because this is not the original length that I had. So how we can fix this is by uh, this scale value where we're using this rest length for. We have to divide it by whatever size our uh, object has, which was in this case 1.5. And now we have that also fixed. So that's a nice way to uh, deal with displacement. Another trick that we can have to uh, place stuff to not make the video too long is to move stuff along these vectors, which we already did once uh, when we were dividing stuff. So if we have this point cloud, I can now say V at P plus equals V at up times a channel reference. I'm going to call this dist. I'll press this little plus icon to actually get this, uh, this variable. And now if I move this, I'm moving them from zero to one downwards because my 
up, up vector has a certain length. If I want this to be an absolute value, because right now they are just like the bottom to the top from 0 to 1. But if I want this to be an absolute value, what I can do is to normalize this vector. Because now it doesn't have a length anymore. And now it's an absolute value, which is also kind of a nice, tri nice trick, which could be handy. And I can start moving them. And the same trick uh, you can do if you want to have those sideways uh, directions. Instead of using the up one, we can use a cross product with the up and the, the forward, which was the normal. Uh, there we go. And now we will be going sideways, which can also give a kind of uh, funky effect, but it's also very uh, needed at some points, especially the moment you start working with corners. So that's another trick you can use. And then there's one more thing that we, uh, which is really cool, is to start messing around with noises a little bit. So let's do one final example of what you can do with a system like this. And then it's up to you to what you want to do with it. Let's use a point fob, uh, a point the anti-aliased uh, alias flow noise, a noise flow noise, which is kind of fun. Let's make a get an output of this. Let's normalize this, and we will be adding this, for example, to our up vector. So let's grab the up vector with a bind. Let's make sure it's a vector. And now we can do a lerp, if, which is a mix inside of FOPS. To mix the two of these, let's promote this. So middle mouse button, promote parameter. So now it's on top of the node. And we are going to be adding this to the up. We're going to set this. We're going to set the up, uh, up, up value again. So bind export. There we go. And now we have a parameter over here, which is basically how much noise we want this stuff to have. Which is always fun, because if we wire this now in, we have a noise slider for some more randomness, which is always cool to have. And right now our origin of our points is set to uh, the top, so that's where the noise basically starts, which is something you might want. Uh, you maybe don't want it, that depends on what you want to do, and depending if you use the uh, up as uh, noise or the normal as noise, you also get different results. If you want to have this centered in the middle, you can basically use this, uh, this trick that we have over here, um, this movement trick. We can move it back to up and then set this distance uh, to be 0 0.5 without uh, it, it being normalized, and then we always have the middle, which can be nice because then we have more uh, centerized uh, noise. Which is also cool. All right, uh, I think that was it. There's a bunch of tricks, bunch of things you can do with this. You can try to isolate corners or define what you want. And um, yeah, looking forward to uh, anything you guys might make. Good luck and have fun.